So we're going to start talking about probability now. Uh, and to get you started, let's remind you that basically probability is the chance that something will happen. Uh, and there are lots of different some things that we can investigate. But we want to represent those chances numerically. Uh, typically, you're going to see probability as a number written between 0 and 1. And that could be in fraction form or in decimal form. Sometimes you might see probability given in percent form. So when you hear their weather forecast and they talk about there might be a 20% chance of rain today, that is a probability, but it's given in percent form. But as far as your math teachers are concerned, we want unless otherwise specifically stated in the problem, we want you to give us your probability as simplified fractions. Okay, just make that understood now. So the first type of probability we're going to talk about is simple probability. Uh, basically, that's just the likelihood that one specific event will occur. Uh, when you're investigating sp simple probability, there are actually a few different types. One type is theoretical probability. Uh, that's calculated based on what is supposed to happen. You look at the number of favorable or desired outcomes uh, that you are hoping to get, and you put that over the total number of possible outcomes. And the way that you figure that out is you have to look at the way something is designed, the way your experiment is set up, and is supposed to happen. So when I'm rolling a die, which is the single form of dice, right? Dice is plural, but die is single. Uh, and I want to roll an odd number. Um, so on one single dice, there are six possible outcomes. One, two, three, four, five, six. How many of those are an odd number? Because what I desire to happen, what I want to happen, is rolling an odd number. Well, there are three different possibilities of odd numbers that I can land on. So number of favorable or desired outcomes is three out of a total number of possible six outcomes. Except now that I've got this set up, I need to reduce my fraction. And so my chances of rolling an odd number are one half. Um, notice in this case that all of the different ways uh, that my dice could land are all equally likely. But that's not always true. Uh, in some cases, not al all outcomes are going to be equally likely. And these cases are usually based on some type of area model where each of the results, each of the sections, do not have an equal size and therefore their outcomes are not equally likely. If you compare these two spinners, these are supposed to be spinners, so you kind of have to imagine right, a little arrow centered in the middle and pointing and spinning around. Um, if I look at this one on the left, all of those outcomes are equally likely because they all have equal area, or at least that's what I was going for with my imprecise drawing. But when you look here at the second spinner, uh, one that's sort of oblong because Miss Strickland's not good at drawing circles, but mainly the point that I hope you notice is that all of these sections are not the same size and therefore you would not assign them the same likelihood of being landed on. The one here is half of our circle, so you have half a chance of landing on one. The two, three, and four, what I was trying to draw, is that each of these are a third of this half. So a third of the bottom half of the triangle means that each of those have a one-sixth chance of being landed on. The same would be true if we had a circle and a spinner, even if they were the same sizes, but right in that case, I have a two in four chance or a half a chance of landing on a one. Another type of probability is experimental probability. And that's found by repeatedly performing and recording trials and basing your experiments on those results. So when you're doing experimental probability, you find the number of occurrences of the desired event in all of your trials over the total number of trials. So for example, if I was rolling a die again, and these were my results, and I wanted to know the probability of rolling an odd number based off of these experiment results. Well, so how many times did I land on an odd number? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times out of a total number of, well, all the underlines are eight, nine, ten, eleven out of twelve trials. Again, I look, and this can be simplified, eight twelves can be 
simplify to two-thirds. So based off of my experiment, I have a two-thirds chance of rolling an odd number with a certain specific die that I'm working with. Now it's your turn. Try these do now problems. Uh, for this first problem, I want you to tell me the probability of landing on heads when you flip a coin one time. Uh, for the next two, I want you to use the spinner at the right and figure out the probability of first landing on a one and then probability of landing on a two. Uh, and then at the end, tell me what types of probabilities these are. Pause now. So let's see how you did. The probability of landing on heads when you flip a coin is one out of two. Your coin has two sides, heads is one of them, so you have a one-half chance of landing on heads. When I look at the spinner at the right, um, it's not going to just be a matter of counting up how many spaces there are, because they're not all equal sized spaces. Uh, for the probability of landing on one, I have to land in this section right here. And it looks as though we've taken one-fourth of the circle and cut that one-fourth into thirds. So a third of a fourth means I have to multiply those together and I get one-twelfth. So my chances of landing there are one-twelfth based on the area that it takes up in my circle. Now the probability of landing in a two, notice there are multiple sections that have a two. So I can land here or here, in which case I need to add those probabilities together. This section right here is another one-twelfth because again it is one-third of this one-fourth. But this section over here is one-fourth. So I can land in one-twelfth or I can land in the one-fourth. Uh, <clears throat> that means I need to add those together. So let's get some common denominators. Plus three-twelfths, which gives me four-twelfths, which is equal to one-third. And last but not least, what types of probabilities are these? Well, each of these is an example of simple probability because they're each one finding the probability of one specific event. The other type of probability that they all are would be theoretical probability. All three of these are the calculations we did based on what is supposed to happen. None of them have been based on any actual experimental results where we have repeatedly tried and recorded our results and then looked at what we got and used that to uh, create a probability. So they're all theoretical in nature based off of the way the events were designed and what's supposed to happen. Now, no matter what type of probability you find, we can use probabilities to make predictions. Actually, more specifically, we can use probabilities and proportions in order to make predictions. We want to take what we know about how often something is supposed to happen and then extend that to figure out how many times we should expect it to happen out of a certain number of future trials. So let's take a look here. We know the probability of rolling a four on a regular die is one out of six, because that four is one side out of six. They're all equally likely to land. So what about if I were to plan on rolling that die 300 times? How many times would I expect to land on the four? So if I'm supposed to land on the six, uh, excuse me, on the four, one out of every six times, how many times will I land on the four out of 300 times. So that's how I can set up my proportion. One out of six should equal how many out of 300? Uh, you can do this a few different ways, but I know that six times 50 gives me 300. So one times 50 tells me that x is equal to 50 times. I should expect to land on the four 50 times. All right, your last do now. At the top, I've got some experimental results. I was flipping a coin, and I recorded what I got every time, and that's what all these H and T's are for, heads and tails. So using those experimental results, what is the probability of landing on heads? And then take that probability and extend it. Tell me how many times I would expect to land on heads if I flipped the same coin 25 times. Pause now. So first we've got to start with this. Using my experimental results, what is the probability of landing on heads? Well, one, two, three, four, four heads, four of my desired outcomes out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten out of ten trials. Uh, that can be reduced though, so I have a two-fifths chance, according to my experimental results, of landing on heads. 
So how many times would I expect to land on heads out of 25 flips? Well, now I have to set up a proportion. If I expect to land on heads two out of every five times, how many times out of 25 times would I expect that to happen? Uh, you can solve it a few different ways. Since I already used a scale factor earlier, I'm going to remind you that the other way to solve it would be to multiply by 25 on both sides so that this number will cancel and we're left with x. Over here, 25 times 2 is 50 over 5, which is 10 times.